The kayak paddle doesn't have a pivot attached to the board, and its connection to the board must be managed by the athlete. This requires from the athletes a specific skill to apply his power into the board movement. This ability is an important component of the advanced sprint kayak paddling technique. The notion of pivot. The paddle shaft rotates in space relatively to the boat during the power phase of the stroke, and there can be found its virtual point of rotation at each moment. This point can be considered as a virtual paddle lock, a pivot of the paddle shaft. The location of the pivot determines the effective length of the mechanical lever available to propel the boat. When the pivot is higher from the water, then the used paddle length becomes longer and the interaction between the blade and the water becomes more efficient. The picture looks differently relatively to the water, when the point of rotation is located around the neck of the blade. As we remember, the properly locked in the water paddle enters and exits from the water in the same place, moving around an ellipsoid trajectory, so called a bubble of water. This aspect of paddling technique had been shown in details in the previous video Lock the Blade. Both these two points together are constituting the effective mechanical lever to propel the boat. Edward McKeever, Olympic Champion 2012 and World Champion in K1 200 meters, gives us an outstanding example of a very efficient paddle management. Position of the pivot is a derivative of the speed of the horizontal displacement of pulling and pushing hands relatively to the boat. The position of the pivot is higher when the top hand moves forward slower than the pulling hand moves backwards. Ideally the paddle shaft should rotate within the top hand during all power phase rather than pivoting around the pulling hand or in any other point of the shaft below the top hand. The work of the top hand is crucial to keep the pivot in a high position. The top hand should direct the effort along the shaft, stay parallel with the water during the stroke, it should not yield upwards after the catch. Maintenance of the pivot in as high position as possible is one of highest priorities of an efficient kayak technique. The too quick extension forward of the top hand is one of the most common technique mistakes in canoeing. Vectors of the pushing effort To hold the pivot the top hand should work against two main forces which come as reaction forces from A the pushing force forward, and b, the immersion of the blade. These two forces are working in opposite directions pushing the top hand upwards and they should be curbed by the work of the top hand. 
in the transverse, this force is overcome by the conventional rotational effort. This directed forward force must be originated from the footrest. The pressure on the footrest generates a reaction force which must to be transmitted through a power loop upwards into the top hand, and then further downwards along the paddle shaft. The picture below shows the well-recognized example of use of the reaction force of the ground to reinforce the hand strike in martial arts. Canoeists are using the same mechanism. This mechanism requires an obvious synchronization of the pressure of the top hand with the pulling effort and the pressure on the footrest. The athlete has to stand up on the footrest to push the blade in the water, and to do this before the catch. The British 200 meters kayak duo Liam Heath and John Schofield has shown example to follow to manage these forces achieving Olympic podium during 2012 and 2016 Olympic cycles. The propelling effort creates a kind of a counteraction lock between the pulling hand and the pushing foot. This lock should work as a ground to create a loop of the reaction force around the whole body down to the blade. The top hand is physically located in the middle of this loop. The pressure forward therefore must be originated from the boat propulsion, rather than from the torso rotation itself. Failing in this synchronization leads to a failing in creating the pivot and reduces the effective paddle leverage to propel the boat. In the sagittal plane this upwards orientated force creates a torque which tends to flex the trunk backwards. This torque can be counteracted by applying a part of the athlete's body weight on the paddle shaft. The application of the body weight for the boat movement should be directed through the pushing side of the torso. The pressure along the shaft should be concentrated in the top hand and shoulder, and this effort still must be a natural part of whole rotation movement forward. The body weight presses on the top hand through a lever, which must be created between the top hand and the boat seat. The top hand should drive along the shaft reinforced by this lever. The torso of the athlete must lean forward to make this lever more efficient. The body weight works increasing the locking force on the blade, and therefore minimizing the slippage of the blade backwards. Tim Brabants, Olympic champion 2008 in K1 1000 meters and multiple Olympic and world medalist, left us perhaps a most pronounced example of an efficient use of the body weight for the 1000 meters race. The drop of his body weight on the blade could not be any better. The Intergrounds of the GB 200 meters team have persuasively during two Olympic cycles shown the efficiency of this technique element to race the 200 meters sprint. At the same time, Previous research has shown that the leaning forward makes the torso rotation more difficult. So, the optimum body weight usage is based on finding a balance between usages of rotational movement and of the body weight. Experience shows that the variety of this technique element in actual sport practice is big. Many world best athletes don't show a substantial input of the body weight dynamic into the boat movement. However, it should not be discarded from the technical arsenal of a world-class athlete. Top Hand Roll 
The relative magnitude of these two vectors should be controlled by the upper body through a conjunction of three main points, the pulling hand, pushing shoulder, and the top hand. Each of these points controls its own specific parameter, pushing shoulder, transmits the power of torso rotation into the paddle, top hand, coordinates this power through the trajectory and the speed of the blade, pulling hand, propels the boat. But it is important at the same time operate all three points as a conjunction of elements pursuing the same target. Coordination of these three points in a conjunction must direct the blade to spear the water forward, move it forward along a circular trajectory inside the water, around a bubble of water, minimize its slippage backwards, see the previous video lock the blade. Consideration of the notion of the pivot requires a comprehensive review of the role of the top hand for the kayak paddling technique. The top hand emerges as a central point to manage the forces arising from the most important parts of the paddling system. Liam Heath, Olympic champion 2016 in K1 200 meters and multiple Olympic and world medalist in K2 200 meters, is showing us one of the best examples of a combination of the powerful work of the top hand with the long reach, full torso rotation and leading legs drive. The top hand is physically situated on a junction of the forces circulating between the footrest, torso and the paddle blade. Its attitude therefore is crucial to merge the effort of the upper and lower body of the athlete, to synchronize the entire chain of legs, torso, paddle into an integrated propelling motion. The top hand controls a sort of tripod of fundamental technique actions, propelling control leverage control and rotation control. The top hang acts as an important meeting point of these essential forward paddling synergies. The first attempts to research a virtual paddle lock produced by the author were in the 1980s for members of the USSR kayak team. They had shown that a high position of the virtual paddle pivot is an essential attribute of the technique of top athletes. However, the limited video technology of those times didn't allow to make this method very practical or popular to teach this element of paddling technique. Integration of video technologies in modern coaching practice makes possible to use it as a routine coaching tool, and get valuable information across a majority of the world best athletes. We can see that Knud Homan left us one of the historically best examples of a pivot location on the paddle shaft during the stroke. A practical method to monitor the virtual paddle lock consists in a measurement of a deviation of the top hand up from the horizontal trajectory during the water phase of the stroke. Ideally the top hand should not yield up for more than one centimeter after the blade has touched the water. Summary the top hand in the kayak paddling technique constitutes a crucial meeting point for the major muscle synergies of the paddling motion. 
it controls the timing and power flow between the most important force application points. An important visual criterion of the efficient work of the top hand can be found in the notion of a virtual pivot of the paddle shaft. The location of the pivot during the water phase of the stroke reflects the mechanical efficiency of the movement of the paddle, plays a fundamental role in the channeling all athletes' effort into the boat movement. The fundamental targets of the work of the top hand include Make the blade moving at the catch faster than the water Get the blade locked in the water by pressure along the paddle shaft Establish a virtual pivot for the paddle during the power phase Lead the extraction of the blade from the water When we talk about the pivot point, we're describing the location at which the paddles rotate throughout one stroke Ideally, the location of this pivot point would be the top hand enabling the leverage on the paddle to be as long as possible. To maintain this ideal location, the top hand has to have a strong connection to the movement of the trunk through the driving phase of the stroke. This connection is lost if the top hand shoots forward during the driving phase of the stroke, in effect lowering the location of the paddle's pivot point and reducing its leverage and length of stroke. To prevent the top hand shooting forwards, pressure must be maintained down the shaft during the whole stroke. Um, that doesn't make sense. Useful coaching instructions. Forward catch. Spear the water forward. Spear the water by the top hand. Top hand is ready to spear the water. Push the top hand earlier. Fill top hand on the catch. Both hands work 50 fiftieths of a percent on the catch. Top hand works harder along the shaft. Keep pivot in the top hand. Keep top hand at the eye level. Top hand straightens only for the setup.
nothing moves backwards on the catch. Five, two, one, go! Top hand drags the pulling hand forward. Drop your weight on the blade. Drop the weight through the top hand. Blade, Fibbers, and top hand work together. Five! Ready, up! Synchronize the three points. Stay on the footrest for the catch. Okay. Ready up. Check connections. 